Good day everyone, welcome to another experience and impressions video. Today's topic, StarCraft 2. Okay. Short disclaimer, this is mostly about the campaign gameplay, even though a skirmish play is in the background of this video. All in all, I love the campaigns and the mission variation. Not much more to say as an introductory statement. To put the game into context, StarCraft II released with the first faction campaign, uh, Wings of Liberty, in 2010 and is from Blizzard Entertainment, of course. Two expansions were released for the game, Heart of the Swarm in 2013, adding the Zerg campaign, and Legacy of the Void in 2015 with the Protoss campaign. It is a real-time strategy game, or RTS in short. Although the campaigns are great, a big focus of the game was also the PvP and multiplayer aspect. For a time, it was the esports title in the world, with big tournaments and everything, possibly being the first game to bring esports to the big global stage. Also, the game can be played for free in a limited capacity. As for gameplay loops, there are the standard real-time strategy things in here, like building a base and building an army. Defeating the enemy or completing some other objective in the mission being the ultimate goal you need this army for. However, in the campaigns there is also a meta-level gameplay, where you can get various upgrades in between missions, which leads to... progression. In the campaigns, you do not only get new units to play around with in almost every mission, teaching you about the properties of said units, but also the mentioned upgrades. These upgrades are very cool and can sometimes completely change how certain units work, keeping the progression through the campaign interesting. In contrast to most other games I played, the units used in PvP are vastly different from the units used in the campaign, not in the least thanks to said upgrades. This is a bit of a double-bladed sword, since on one hand it keeps things interesting and is very cool, but on the other hand only teaches fundamentals about the factions for PvP, not allowing all the learned things from the campaign to transfer over to PvP. The story is compared to other RTS I played extremely good. The narrative progression is done in the missions themselves as well as in between missions, where you can get fully voiced inputs from key characters. Again, for the presentation I cannot complain much. Sure, the graphics are a bit outdated by now, but hold up surprisingly well thanks to an artistic middle ground of cartoonish and realistic. The music and sounds are great as well, the only problem I had uh, in the playthrough were due to Windows insisting on using a 5.1 surround sound channel even though I had my stereo headphones plugged in, and I can't blame the game for that. And the performance is also good, I never had a crash or anything, and in terms of snappiness it's phenomenal. Every unit controls in an instant, which is probably an important point in eSports, so they nailed that aspect as well. There are just a few more points to talk about. Controlling multiple units with activated abilities can be done by cycling through the various units with tab and activating abilities from there. This was sadly not explained or I missed it until the last campaign. Knowing that you can switch between units would have made a few missions a bit easier. Talking of activated abilities, in StarCraft 2 many units can have activated abilities. Sometimes they activate automatically, like the medics heal, but most have to be triggered by the player. That's a bit different from other RTS like Age of Empires, where most units don't have such abilities. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this design. On one hand, it can be very rewarding when pulling off a cool combo, and it follows the principle of easy to learn and hard to master. On the other hand, I often forgot about abilities, at least in the beginning of the playthrough. The last point to address is the cash shop. There is a cash shop in this game and I'm kind of okay with it. 
As far as I have seen, there is the option to buy cosmetic alternate skins for units, different announcers and UI skins, so nothing altering gameplay in any way. Would it be cool if those things could be earned in-game? Well, of course. But I also acknowledge that the game has upkeep costs on servers, and they made portions of the game free to play. The prices on the items are steep though, if you want a skin for every unit. So all in all, I can live with this implementation, but it's not perfect, without an option to earn the items in the purchased game. The game and the expansions did cost quite a bit of money already, after all. They could just make content packs and sell those, like the expansions and the Nova pack, to make extra money for the servers. The cash shop aside, I had a great time playing through the campaigns and the game does live up to the great reputation Blizzard has, or has had. We'll play again. What is it? That was my shorter video on StarCraft 2. I hope you enjoyed. As usual, let me know your experience with the game or ideas for improvements. Also, like and subscribe if you are feeling generous. Thank you very much for watching and see you on the next video.